Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashalel Shai, Bahashem, Bakaha, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be light unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners among the heathen that look like the heathen, and to the Aquath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming at you with another lesson in truth. And, uh, you know, uh, I did a video about five years ago that says that now, now, uh, now that uh, Esau is talking about Edom or something to that effect. Um, that video has got quite a few views uh, to this date. But this is, a, and especially now, the, and it's basically, it's now, now all of a sudden the Christians are talking about Edom or something like that. And uh, this was a subject, you, you know, I was in those churches my whole early adult life before coming into this truth, you know, uh, until I stopped going when I, when I, you know, when I knew it was all bull. But, you know, for the, I would say for the first, you know, you know, 20, 25 years or so of my life, you know, from my childhood, you know, I kind of fell off in my teenage years, but started going back as a young adult. Um, the subject of Edom was something that you rarely or never heard about. The average Christian, when you hear about Edom, they don't know. All right. And then when Edom is talk, talked about, uh, the, the, uh, you know, that you get the same bullcrap theology and no, and no story. You get the story that Edom is done away with. And the Bible clearly tells you that there is no end to, the, to all the people in Ecclesiastes. But let me get uh, Luke real quick. This is uh, Luke 8 and 17. And it reads, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be made known and come abroad. So it's all going to come abroad. And the problem is with all the theories and things that they talk about, you know, and uh, it never matches up the prophecy. And, and this first video, the one that's kind of running in a little ticker tape thing there, uh, the beloved... Uh, uh, elder brother Demashapot sent it to me yesterday and I started watching it and it actually just irritated me. I couldn't even finish it, you know. Um, I started reading the comments and wasn't even paying attention to the video. I was just reading the comments and, um, you know, if someone want to follow behind me and do, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, blam back on it and, 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 and tear them up. But um, I started, you know, I, like I said, I started reading the comments and I, and I just... Made a, made a comment and just kept it moving, you know, and uh, and then right here on the second video that is saying who who are the Edomites and then they're showing you someone that, that looks like a modern day Arab because the Arabs were really dark, you know, in the ancient world, just as dark as Negroes, um, some even darker like Qadar, all right, which li names li literally means dark skin, all right, then, you know, so it's a whole list of them, you know, and um. You're never going to get the truth from these people because, you, you know, they always get that they're done away with and they're not here and all these other things. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, we all know who the ruling class people are in the earth today. Everyone knows. All right. Even though that particular group of people is losing power. And Psalm 63, because this video wasn't even just going to, you know, when was it going to be about this? But I just wanted to touch on it. I actually want to finish going into the books, uh, the discourse on the evidences of American Indians being descendants of the lost tribes of Israel by M. M. Noah. You know, this will be on the Critical Race uh, Historical Facts channel. And, there's, and I think this will be part three from that series. There's a couple uh, series that I haven't finished that I have. To, so I was going to do that, but it's starting off with this Edom thing. All right. But. Uh, in the book of, of Isaiah, and I always bring this out, you know, when the Lord returns, no matter what lies they tell, the, the Lord, you know, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, returns to a world ruled by Edom. 
And there's a particular group of people who, who for the past couple centuries, especially in the 19th century, bragged about their conquest of everyone else, uh, you know, and, and what they've done. And, you know, even <laughs> and um, and now that we're in the 2000s, you know, when you bring up the very things that they bragged about, it's critical race theory now. Well, according to the Bible, those would be the Edomites. In every prophecy, and all the way down to the paleness of their flesh and the redness of their skin, because their blood shows forth under their skin. All right? And we're talking about people who refer to themselves as Caucasian or white. All right? Outside of those uh, among them that are other nations, because, you know, all nations have, you know, mixed among other nations and things of that nature. So, there are some Israelites who actually look like so-called white people. And if you can't understand that, then you, uh, you know, and look like Chinese and look like the other nations. Because the Israelites got scattered uh, among all people. All right. And so after being among a, a particular group of people, you're not going to return, retain your original state. Even, even though if you're, if you, you cannot never change a bloodline. You know, and that was Esau that came up with that false concept of being mixed. If your father was the seed of an Israelite, all right, then you're the seed of an Israelite, regardless of the package you come in. All right. Simple as that. Now, you know, if your mother was an Israelite and you're the seed of another race, then you're just that other race. And the Bible backs it up. But this is Isaiah 6 and 1, and it reads, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra that is glorious in his apparel? Traveling in the greatness of his strength, I speak righteous, righteousness mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that trotted the wine vat? And I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. And the year of my redeemed is come. All right. So the Lord has vengeance in his heart. And he is going to redeem his people. And he is going to redeem them from Edom. Edom is the ruling class people of the world. It is not the Arabs. The Arabs, the world didn't drink the wine of the Arabs and follow the ways of the Arabs. The world drank the wine of the so-called Caucasian. And followed the ways of the Caucasian. In India, they wear suits and ties. In China, they wear suits and ties. All right? And everywhere else around the world, when they have their UN meetings and their summits. All right? Only the Saudis wear their traditional dress, and even they still wear suits and ties and often shave their faces bald. All right? Which is a trait of the Edomite. Edomite has always been in in uh, uh, in opposition of the of, of the Lord. All right, it was those Herodians and Romans and Greek Edomites. All right, because Alexander took over all of Europe, uh, Asia, and uh, most of North Africa. All right, and Alexander is an Edomite. All right. So it's amazing that they do all these archaeological finds, you know, when you're looking at these people. I'm just switching to another ticker tape, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the one found them on the oldest one. The guy, that's the one talking about the Moabite stone, I'm pretty sure. Just just from reading the, the, uh, the quick uh, ticker tape there. All right, but when you, you know, when you're reading these guys, they're not telling you that I, Alexander of Macedon, Alexander the Great, was well, the Edomite, but history tells you that. The Bible tells you that. And it tells you everything that they did. They, they, you know, it's just showing you on the bottom wall. You can't see that when it's out of focus. The geography of the Holy Land, Edom. All right. That's the very bottom one. You, you can't see it. It's out of screen. But, you know, these people, they're just, you know, they're liars. Okay. Um, but let's go a little bit into this book, all right? 
And we were on, I was on page, uh, that was this one, you know, let me put it back in the, let's see if we can shed a light on it. There we go. Which they're going to make that quick thing. Watch that become the thumbnail and not the whole Edomites, the brother of Israel. <laughs> Watch it. Watch YouTube take that quick shot. Of the discourse of the evidence of American Indians being descendants of the lost tribes of Israel, and make that the uh, the, the 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 thumbnail, because they don't you know they don't want this thing that Edom talked about. I guarantee you that's that's what YouTube is going to do. But we're going to go to page because uh, I left it the screen here on this information about the Edomites on purpose. All right, but. Mark my words, that's what they're going to do. That This will not, what you're looking at now, all right, will not be the uh, the thumbnail. But we're on page uh, five. I'm just going to read this, this portion. Um, and it says, I'm in uh, paragraph two, second paragraph. And this book is from 1837. This was actually uh, an... Um, a, a live speech that he gave in a town hall, all right? Uh, delivered before the Mercantile Library Association, Clinton Hall, all right? So, you know, before the Library Association. So they're very well aware, but you will hear the lies and you also hear, you hear the truth and you hear the lies, but, all right? But it reads, uh, there is no doubt that in the, in the march from the Euphrates to the northeast coast of Asia, many of the tribes hesitated in pursuing the journey, some remained at Tartary. Many went into China. So they're talking of the northeast. What's the northeast portion of uh, of Asia uh, above Russia, <clears throat> going to the Bering Strait? All right. Now uh, Israelites all through there. Yes, did they cross into the Americas through the Bering Strait? No, that is a complete and total lie. Because what they're trying to say is they came both ways. They're acknowledging. They acknowledge the, the book of Ezra, but they're also saying that they went this way too. All right. It says Alvarez states uh, in history of China that the Jews have been living in that kingdom for more than 600 years. He might, um, he might with great possibility have said 1600 years. He speaks of, of, of there being a very numerous in some of the provinces and having synagogues in many of the great cities, especially that in Henneman and, Metro and, and Metropolis of, of Kinang Tangfu, where he represents them to have a magnificent place of worship and a respiratory for high volume, adored with richly embroidered curtains in which to preserve the ancient Hebrew manuscripts. Now, in this third video, they do show you, you know, the, 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 uh, uh, that one stone that was found um, among the uh, uh, Misha, the king, King Misha of China, with the you know with the name of King David and Israel on it, the Moabite stone. So the Israelites did go among Moab. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture to to substantiate it, and they look like Moab today. You know, you hear us talk about Bruce Lee and his spirit, and the people, and the, and the Bolo Young, and the, and the those uh, uh, those Moabites that got flavor, all right, that are different from the rest of Moab, you know, because Moab is really kind of weird and nerdy, you know, no salt, kind of walk funny, they're not, you know, they're not cool at all, then you got Moabites that can, you know, break dance, sing and rap, it's, I mean, you know, it's, they just can do things that are real jakus in nature, all right, um, well, let's go to Isaiah, I think it's 16 and 4. So in this account, he's accurate because the Lord hid uh, Israelites among, but it didn't say the northern kingdom. It was the southern kingdom. It was Judah. All right. But here, uh, but it says, uh, that's how we know that this, that they crossed, went way uh, uh, east to the, to the Barren Strait. That, that's just a lie, man. But it says, uh, Isaiah 16 and 4 says, let, let mine outcast dwell with thee, O Moab, be thou a covert, a covering, a hiding place. That's what covert means. All right, to hide something. Be a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the extortioner is at an end, the spoiler ceaseth, the oppressor 
are consumed out of the land. So the Lord strategically stored Judite sperm line men among the Chinese. Because there was a time when Judah was being, you know, hunted down, exterminated and killed. So what did he do? What did the Lord do? He playing chess. He hid some of his, some of the bloodline of his chosen among a people that don't look like them. All right. Understanding and knowing that, that, you know, the seed of a man is, a, is the determination of his, uh, of your nationality, regardless of what you look like. So if you have, you know, thousands of Judite men that are, you know, because what does Judah do and all the Israelites do when they go to foreign lands? They lay with the women. All right. So you got all these Israelites and, and women love to lay with Israel. All right. Uh, you know, shooting semen, shooting the life into these women. You know, these women incubate that the uh, that life and bring forth uh, children. Well, those children often come out looking like their mothers. Duh. It's not that difficult, man. It really isn't. All right. So let's go back to this book. because I've been wanting to finish this. We got this thing about completion. But it says, uh, well, he represents them to have a magnificent place of worship and a treasury and a respiratory of a high volume adorned with richly embroidered curtains in which they preserve the ancient Hebrew manuscript, manuscript roll, all right, which we'll be talking about the Tanakh, the Torah, the Tanakh. They, they know but little of the Mosaic law and only repeat the names of David, Abraham, uh, Isaiah and Jacob in a Hebrew letter written to the to the uh, Jews of uh, uh, the Judites and this, this, this whole Jewish thing I get so tired of that of, of Coke and China and their brethren the Jew the Judites never called themselves Jews the Judeans the uh, never called themselves Jews all right that's a modern day word that was printed and written in these Bibles and now everyone's got a used to and accustomed to saying it because when you say Jew it makes you think of a complete and total different people kind of like the ones you're looking at on the screen. Remember, there was a group of Edomites who converted to Judaism, the Herodians, all right, before them. The Herodians, the Herodians married, married the daughter of the high priest uh, uh, of the Maccabees, the last of the Maccabees, all right? John Hyrcanus uh, did a, a forced uh, conversion in, in a battle that Edomites uh, 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 lost. It was either follow the way, our ways, or die. And so the Edomites converted you know, this particular group of Edomites uh, converted to following to, to the ways of the Bible, which they call Judaism of being Jewish today. All right. That's where you get your Jewish from these, these, these Edomite converts. All right. Not the actual people of the Lord of the book, the bloodline. All right. And it says, uh, a letter written to the to the uh, Judeans of Kukin, of Kukin, China, to their brethren at Amsterdam, they gave as as so people. How do the people in Amsterdam live? How do you think their children? Live? How do you think those Israelites are gonna look as time goes by? You you see we see what I'm saying here. It says they they gave as a date of their retiring into India, <laughs> a period when the Romans conquered the Holy Land. So the the Israelites. So when the Romans conquered the Holy Land, see, this is how you know this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This was the Southern Kingdom. And the Southern Kingdom definitely didn't cross the Barren Strait. And the Southern Kingdom, right, and the Northern Kingdom never called themselves Jews or Judeans. They never did. That's one of the reasons why they broke. Broke, they separated. All right? It says, it is clearly evident, therefore, that the tribes and their progress to a new undiscovered country left many of their numbers. So let me go to Acts real quick. Let's go to the book of Acts. Um, give an example how the Israelites were scattered all over the place. In the book of Acts, um, I'm going to start at, well, I'm going to start at uh, verse 8. The point is in 9, though. And it says, how we hear many of our, uh, how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. All right? Because, and these are all the people uh, that were scattered, that came back. As a matter of fact, let me start at, at, uh, at verse, verse uh, uh, 
5, Acts 2 and 5. And there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. It's going to mention some of the nations we just read in this book. All right. See, they were out of every nation. Why? Because they had already been scattered. All right. Uh, jumping down to verse 9. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and Pontus in Asia, Phygria, Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya and Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So they came from all, they were coming from all of Asia. Asia is huge, all right? And uh, and then they were, you know, the whole, the matter of fact, what they refer to of the Middle East, that's all Asia. Asia is connected to Africa. They were coming from Africa, from different parts of Africa. They were coming from Europe, all right? Because Turkey, Syria, you know, uh, Arabia, uh, Jerusalem, that all the way to the Bering Strait. That's all Asia. That's the continent of Asia. All right, there is no continent of the Middle East. It's all Asia, and Asia connects to Europe, and Asia connects to Africa. So these Israelites was coming from all those places where they were scattered to. Okay. So let's turn to uh, page six and read read this last part here. And it says, and in China, Tartary finally reached the, the, the Straits of Bering. Here we go. Where no difficulty prevailed them from crossing to the northwest coast of America. And I'm going to stop right there. That's lies. There are no relics. There are no records. There will be bodies and dead people. There will, there will be, you know, there was no food to eat or hunt. How did the old and the young survive? You can't, they need ice breaking ships to cross the Bering Strait. You need high tech winter gear modern day today to cross it snowmobiles there's no way that you are going to get millions of people to cross on foot in the Bering Strait you know that many millennia ago so this man is a liar so let's uh so they so that's just what Esau does he'll tell you the truth and then he'll give you lies as well because they acknowledge that they came across uh you know uh uh in the book of Ezra, all right, that they came to the Americas, you know, from, from the southern on up, but they're also saying that they came from the north on down, all right, so which is a complete and total lie. This is uh, Job 13 and 4, and it reads, But ye are forgers of lies, ye are all physicians of no value. So this group of uh, doctors, all right, philanthropists and, and you know and uh, historians and librarians that met in the Mercantile Library of Congress Association in Clayton Hall and listened to M.M. Noah in 1837 they were physicians of no value they were telling lies all right so with that I'm gonna give all praises all honor and glory unto Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham 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 B